Welcome back to Leadership Lessons Now. This is a really interesting topic for me, which is data and leadership, and specifically how to use data and leadership. Certainly there's a lot more data than there's ever been to make database decisions, but it's interesting as I see sort of different generations of leadership and how they respond to data. Probably the, you know, 40 years ago, uh, there's really an instinct-driven decision-making based on consumer trends that are happening in real time, maybe in the retail marketplace as you see customers buying product, what type of product they're buying, and you make more of that product and you sell more of that product and it reinforces uh, what you see on the sales floor. Data now, you know, in the maybe 30, 20, and even 10 years of leadership it's continued to really challenge leaders to stay agile in their learning capability of systems and software, and then how to decipher the right data and what is right data in order to make the best decision for their teams and for their company. So uh, I looked up a Harvard Business Review on how CEOs can help support a data-based decision uh, culture. And actually, I don't I don't really see it to be a challenge with uh, integrating data as a lot of new leaders are coming on board or actually using data to supplement their inexperience to make better decisions. So become for me at least it's less about trying to have a company use data. It's more about the right data to make the best decisions on because no matter what you track, people want to show what's red, what's yellow, and what's green, and the, and the data that's red needs to be focused on. Uh, data yellow needs to continue to be improved, and then the green is usually overlooked pretty quickly as like, yep, that was some good success, but let's move on. So it's really about a culture of how to balance data with instinct and what some possible pitfalls are if you are too heavy on data. I think that's the real topic. Uh, in 2019, Deloitte survey found 67% of executives said they're not comfortable accessing or using data from their tools and resources. But if you look at that closely, that not comfortable is not necessarily about the technology because there's plenty of technology and apps and systems and servers and you know building up your infrastructure to support data. But now there's so much data that the comfortableness is about how to use it effectively. And I think actually it's pretty dangerous, you know, especially as the executive branch of leadership um, is farthest away from the work. Whatever data they're fed, they see the value of their job to improve that data number. That red number needs to go black, which is improvement or green as some sort of exceeding expectation metric. And so these KPIs are being thrown around and no one, at least in my experience, really has a good understanding of what data metrics are driving the key performance indicators. And there's sort of a uh, immaturity in data integration as a decision-making process that uh, synergizes with instinct. So I thought First, I wanted to look at what's out there. And again, back to HBR, it talked about really trying to like ramp up data use through three things, educational programs, leading by example, and promotions and rewards for people using data. So I think you could be real, I think that's a slippery slope to kind of go all in on data and more data is better and more graphs are better, more Excel sheets are better, more pivot tables are better all graphs should go up, like it really starts to lose its effectiveness because it dilutes uh, the focus direction. So I think for me, there are three things that I would say an effective leader could use data for and be mindful of. The first one is data is a historical value. And so if you, if you walk into maybe your business, your facility, and you start with the data of yesterday or last week or last period or last year. This is in a historical value. And it's nice to know where you've been, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's where you're going. So to go back and say, let's correct those things of where we've been really 
only gets you to the present moment. It doesn't get you to where your consumers are trying to um, get value for the future. So first one is historic, you know, be careful not to use data as the primary mode in making decisions as it will never keep you up to date with where customers need you to be. So it's an historical value over future value and it requires a balance there. The second one is when you're always using data, it goes back to this structural way of managing, which is a task management approach in that you say, these numbers are red, do these things to make them better. And the team and culture starts to depend on data as being the primary mode of action. In other words, they're not looking for ways to improve uh, creatively or um, innovate on new ideas or take advantage of real-time consumer patterns but rather they're waiting on you to say, this is the thing to focus on. And you say, well, they can do both. But what's interesting is those innovators and creators that are doing the work and closest to the consumer, they want to, they want to make some change happen to better support that consumer. But when they start working on that, it's not aligned with the company direction. That's like seven levels above them about looking at industry trends and where the company wants to go and supporting its culture and all of those things. And so as they start to kind of veer off from the company direction, then when the company says, hey, these numbers are red, make them better, it's gonna bring you, it's gonna bring that employee back to center and they can't do both. So if, if their innovation or new decisions they're making based on what consumers are buying aren't, isn't valued from the company, then it becomes work that uh, the company doesn't uh, promote or reward for. And in fact, they actually see that as a distraction uh, because you need to stay centered on what the data is telling us. So I think that, again, it can be a real problem for companies that you feel like you're doing the right thing because you're looking at numbers that need to improve, but you're discounting what it is that your folks are saying who are closest to the work, which is that did well yesterday, but this is what customers are saying they want now. So this second one is robot culture of creating this sort of structural task management environment by using data as your sole decision-making process. And then fi- uh, finally, third is um, data is always react- reactionary versus proactive. So uh, just know that if you go in and look at yesterday's results, you're trying to improve on yesterday. And if you're always stuck there, then you may be discounting the question of where should we be going in what direction should we be headed and what are we orienting ourselves on. And I think that goes back to purpose. When you can orient yourself on a purpose that it, it creates value infinitely, then, then it allows you to start setting direction for your company based on where you want to go, not on the competitor, not on yesterday's results, but on what your company stands for. And if your company is... Uh, outdated and obsolete and going down because the value is no longer there, then it's a good indication that it's time to start asking some questions of your team members who are closest to the work on what needs to improve. Start that today. So how to use data in leadership? I think it's three things. One, it's balancing its effectiveness as a historical value, making sure you're focused on the future uh, and not just the past. Second, it's to be careful not to create a robot culture of structural task management with data and just telling people what to focus on versus asking the question. And then third, uh, making sure that you're balancing this reactionary versus proactive problem solving. Always be asking where can we be going and make sure it's oriented on your core value for your company and the value for the journey of your company. All right. Well, I appreciate uh, today's uh, content and your ability to stay engaged. Uh, Please subscribe to my channel and a thumbs up or thumbs down just to let me know what your thought of today's lessons. Also, uh, I'm interested in your thoughts about how you use data in leadership and what you agree with or disagree with. Uh, Please leave a comment below.